Hello, in today's video I'm going to demonstrate how to access SolidWorks API from Visual Studio Code in .NET Core C Sharp. To streamline API development we are going to use free and open source xcut.net framework. We will create a simple console application from scratch which allows us to configure the model based on the user inputs. So let me firstly open my template model. So this is the one which I'm going to be using to generate my output. So let's open that in SolidWorks. So this model will be open read only. I'm going to modify dimensions and save as copy. So I have three driving dimension, this, length and height. And you can see the full name of them. So let me close that model and come back to my Visual Studio code. I will start by creating a new console project in .NET Core. For that I need to run .NET new console and it's just going to generate me the project. So with some default of class. Next I'm going to add NuGet package. .NET add package Xarial Xcut Solidworks. And it's going to install some libraries which I can use to automate Solidworks via API. In modern software development using a lot of asynchronous operations. So for that I'm just going to modify the signature of my main function to be asynchronous. I'm just going to bring few namespaces for task and for Xarial Xcut Solidworks. Now we can automate Solidworks via Xcut. So I'm just going to start a new SolidWorks instance and connect to it. Let me declare the variable up, click on await and call SW application start. And I also want to show a message box, hello world, when the application started to see the result. To run this up, I need to run .NET run command and see how it goes. SolidWorks is starting and as a result we can see the message box displayed to our user. Now let's build something more realistic and I'm going to open that template model and modify its parameters. Xcut has some wrapper functions which I can use to access all those APIs, but I still can access direct all those APIs if I want to. So for example, I can just use documents open to open SolidWorks file and I need to specify the arguments and one of the parameters of this argument is a pass. So let me just specify the pass to my template model. I can simply copy that from my folder view copy pass and place it here and as this is a template model I just want to open that as read only so I'm just going to specify the corresponding flag here. Now I can simply access the dimensions and modify their values by their names. So for that I'm just going to go to doc, go to dimensions and just specify the name of the dimension I want to modify. So let's start with width at base and set the value here let it be something like 250 millimeters. Of course, I can use any value. So let me just copy that line and just specify the same value for other dimensions so we can validate the result very easily. So this was XCAD APIs and now I want to save the model and unfortunately at this stage XCAD doesn't have an API to save model but I still can access underlying SolarWorks API. So I just use save as if you've been doing SolarWorks API before, this will be very familiar to you. So I need to specify the path to save my model. So in this case, I'm just going to assign some default value for now. I will also need to specify additional parameters such as version and some options when saving. Finally, I will define a couple of variables for errors and warnings and pass them to the save as function. I will also check the overall result and if that's not true, I'm just going to throw an exception to indicate that the process failed. And then finally, I'm just going to close SolidWorks. I should point out that I deliberately left the path to save document as a folder, which should result in an error. Let's see how it works. Let me now show you how you can debug that code. We need to navigate into the debugger section of Visual Studio Code and simply run. You might be asked to configure the debugger. So just click on configure tasks and it's going to create as a configuration file. You need to select .NET Core and save that file. So now we can debug. So let us start. SolidWorks is launched and we're going to hit the debugger point in our Visual Studio code. So we can use F10 to step through and you can see that can continue. We can see that our model is open read only and we can just assign our values and attempt to save the document. And as I mentioned before, the path is incorrect, so we're going to have an error 
and it's going to throw an exception here. So let's fix the problem. Let's specify the file name, something like res1sldprt, and let's just start the debugger again. Click on play. Going to fire up Solveworks instance. It's going to hit our breakpoint. You can just quickly navigate through the code. And now we're not expecting an error here. And you can see it's all good. And we can close Solveworks as a result. We can browse that resulting file now to validate the output. We should be able to see that in our explorer here. So let's just open that in an explorer and open that in Solveworks. As you can see, all our driving dimensions has been set to 250 millimeters. Now let's remove the hard-coded values of dimensions and rather ask user to enter those values via console. I will firstly output a message to console asking user to specify the viz and wait for the result. I will assign the result to my viz string variable. I will check if it's empty, in this case I will just leave it as it is, otherwise I'm just going to parse that value to double and assign to my dimension. I'm just going to quickly repeat the code for other two dimensions. As a final step, I will ask the user to enter the path where my model should be saved. And I will use that path in my Save As API. Now I want to do one more thing. You may notice that SolidWorks has a splash screen when it's starting, so we can just specify some additional parameters to change the behavior of SolidWorks application. So first I'm just going to bring another enumeration called enum, and for example I can specify the exact version of SolidWorks I want to use, let it be 2020, and I'm just going to specify the B argument, which allows me to start SolidWorks in the background. This argument is using SolidWorks task scheduler, so you must have SolidWorks task scheduler to use that argument. Of course, you don't need to use Visual Studio Code to run that application. So let me now build that application. And let's use .NET build command. It's going to compile the executable which I can run on any machine. Let's browse to our folder and find that executable so we can run it from the command line. bin debug .NET Core 3.1. Now we can run that application from the command line. And you can see SolidWorks is started and it started in the background. So it should be much quicker. And our console now asks us to enter the values. So let's specify the width. We also need to specify height and length. Finally, let's input the file name. So let's output to our out directory. Let me just copy that path here and specify the file name. Let's generate one more model. For that, I'm just going to run that application again and specify different parameters. And I would use res3sldprt as a result file. Now let's start SolidWorks open new assembly and bring all of these three files for comparison. And as you can see, all of these three files are different and have the parameters which we have specified. Thank you for your time.